Connect webinar. Um, apologies for any of you who joined a little bit early. We're having a couple of technical issues, as ever, uh, with these kinds of things, um, and we're just working in the back to help our Leopard trial Trials team get onto the call. Uh, but in the meantime, uh, we're going to kick off this week's webinar. Um, so just to let you know uh, the itinerary uh, for this morning, uh, the first 10 minutes, I'm going to take you through a introduction to Sail Lanka. And uh, just to introduce myself, I'm Matt, Matt McCausen from SLC Representation. And then after that 10 minutes, um, we're going to be joined by the team at Leopard Trails, who are going to give you an update on everything that they've been doing, um, new things they're implementing at the camps, uh, you know, and, and essentially uh, what uh, everything's going to look like as we come out of this period. Um, so uh, don't worry, please, because we will have an opportunity for questions at the end. So a few key facts around Sail Lanka. Um, Sail Lanka are the only sailing company that operates all around Sri Lanka. Um, so there are lots of sail companies, obviously, on the island that are based in different parts of the island. Um, but Sail Lanka basically managed to cover off uh, virtually all of the coastline. Um, they also have a real focus on um, sustainable um, travel um, because their yachts are built, owned and operated in Sri Lanka by Sri Lankans. So inevitably the crew on board any Sail Lanka vessel um, are generally are Sri Lankans. Um, at entry level they take people uh, who may have no professional background in sailing or have sailed but have no accreditations. Uh, they train them, uh, they upskill them on sailing skills, they teach them uh, yacht maintenance, uh, they teach them repair skills. And so basically, essentially, they create these roles in local economies for uh, local people rather than drafting in people from overseas to operate the crews. Uh, they operate along 1,340 kilometers of coastline. And incidentally, the uh, Indian Ocean is perfect for whales, uh, it's perfect for dolphins, uh, tropical fish, sea turtles, all kinds of um, sea life that you can think of essentially. So in terms of where Sail Lanka operates, um, the way they manage to cover off the whole of the island is that from October to April, they operate down here in the south um, from a place called Marissa, and you can see it may be a slightly small view, but you can see you've got Colombo on the left hand side and Nagumbo above it. And then going down the coast, you have, for example, Gaul, and then you've got Marissa, where Sail Lanka operate from October through to April. So really for peak season. Um, that strip of coastline there from Colombo down to Marissa has loads of really iconic beaches like Gaul, like Jungle Beach, like Talala, like Marissa. Um, it's also a prime location for spotting the world's largest mammal, which is, of course, the blue whale. Uh, there are tons and tons of turtle and bird conservation projects dotted along this coastline. And equally, you have Gaul Fort, which is a UNESCO World Heritage Centre city. Um, so then in May, uh, they essentially move the uh, vessels up the east coast. And the reason they do that is purely because the waters get really, really choppy on the south coast. Um, so they move up to the east coast to Trincomalee. Uh, and this is like a lesser known part of the island. But, apart, but it's essentially amazing uh, for reefs. Um, so brilliant for snorkeling, brilliant for swimming. Um, it has fantastic lagoons. So there's, you know, a huge variety of bird life. 
and also slightly further down the coast um, it's actually a fantastic location for um, uh, surfing as well and they do operate from other parts of the island so for example during that October to April season they also operate from Jaffna um, at the top um, of the north coast um, which is more remote less well known but essentially they cover off um, you know the entire coastline by moving gradually around the island so in terms of the Sri Lanka fleet. Uh, they have catamarans. They have eight catamarans, um, which are 16 meters long, with either four or six cabin cabins on board. Those cabins are double bedrooms, and then their flagship boat is, is called the Ocean Diamond. Uh, it's 27 meters long. It has 10 cabins. So it sleeps 20 people and it normally um, has a crew of 12 on board. Um, so what I've taken here is just an example of one of the cruisers that um, Sail Lanka do. And this is really Sail Lanka's entry level products. This is their bread and butter that they do a huge amount of. And it's basically a, um, for example, a half day um, whale watching expedition so you can choose from three hours four hours seven hours but the version i've included here is a seven hour version uh, you would depart at 6 30 in the morning because the best time um, for spotting uh, whales is in the morning. And I should say, it's not just whales, um, it's dolphins, it's sea turtles, it's all kinds of sea life essentially. But the pricing on Sri Lanka is really, really competitive. You've got an entry level price for seven hours of $100 for an adult and $60 for a kid. So if you're a family of four, um, that's a family for just under, um, just over $300, for example. And in that included is your breakfast, your lunch, your refreshments, um, it's all your water sports. So that would be line fishing in most areas, snorkeling in most areas, swimming, um, and paddle boarding as well. The crew on board will consist of a skipper, a lifeguard, a steward, and a chef as minimum. But obviously if it's a bigger group, they would have um, more people on board to assist. Uh, you can do a private version that says pounds, but it's not pounds, it's dollars. $750 is the cost to rent the boat. And you then have a discounted rate per person of $70 for an adult and $40 for a kid. Um, the kinds of whales you can see are blue whales, sperm whales, killer whales, mink whales, uh, you know, for example, bottlenose dolphins, sea turtles, and a, a new option uh, that they've just introduced is a sunset cruise with high tea option and that would be more of a three hour four hour version uh, in late afternoon um, this is an example of what they do but i think it's really important to point out that sri lanka are super super flexible in the way that they work with people so you can approach them or, or you can you know contact your dmc or an operator um, and they will um, approach, speak to sri lanka for you and sri lanka will essentially cost up anything that your client or you yourself are interested in doing um, so they're really, really flexible. So this is a version of their overnight sailing option. So what I've got here is, uh, on the hand side, we've got a sample itinerary for four days. And on the left, that pricing of 375 um, US dollars is the price for one cabin overnight. So it's essentially two days, one night, $375, so that's $375 for two people, so less than $200 each, and that's including all of your meals, it's including your accommodation, obviously, it's including your activities, it's including, you know, in essence, a tour in itself. 
Um, the cabins, like I said, some of the catamarans have six cabins, some have four, and you can choose from one night, two night, three night, and six night stays. Um, the itineraries are fixed itineraries, but again, it is possible to contact Sail Lanka and be quoted on anything that you're interested in, essentially. They can put a quote together. It might be difficult for you to read, but if you look at the brochure inclusion on the right hand side for the four days, you've got a one cabin full board cost of 1,650 US dollars. You've also got a private boat version, which would be for up to eight people for 3,900 US dollars. So that's 3,900 US dollars essentially to have that boat to yourselves. So if you think about it, if you break that down for four days by eight people, that works out as 488 US dollars for four days. So per day, it's a cost of $122. So, you know, if you think about, if you compare that to the cost of a four or five star hotel in Sri Lanka, and you consider that that cost of $122 a day is all your meals, it's essentially your, your trip um, and it's your activities, you know, it's, and it's your accommodation, it's super, super competitive. Um, like I said, Sail Lanka work in lots and lots of different ways um, for customers. So they can accommodate honeymoons, they do weddings sometimes, uh, they do birthday parties, they do private parties, they do corporate events. And just to give you a sort of finger in the air idea, um, to rent that boat to do something like that. So say, for example, to do a corporate three hour event, it's a cost starting from 900 US dollars for, um, for three hours. Um, they work with all key DMCs um, in the Sri Lankan um, uh, industry, um, but they're equally just as happy to work on an ad hoc um, or you know a direct contract basis as well. Um, again, to find out more about it, please just get in contact with me directly. I will follow up with everyone from the call after the call anyway, um, but please um, just drop me a line. I can get you uh, image libraries, I can get you rate sheets, I can get you, um, you know, further training on Sail Lanka. Um, I can put you directly in touch with the team over there as well. So please do let me know whatever you need. Um, in terms of the Ocean Diamond, there uh, this is, as I said, their flagship um, vessel. So you can see we've got um, the cabin down there at the bottom, you've got your sun deck and you've got your dining area with your sort of, you know, sit, sit, sitting bar basically. Um, the cabins are 10, so you can basically sleep up to 20 people on there. You have a staff of 12 on board and additional to um, the water sports that you can do on the catamaran, so your paddle boarding, your line fishing, your snorkeling, your swimming, um, what the Ocean Diamond also has is a jet ski. You've got a lead-in price overnight of 499 US dollars. Um, so that's um, 499 versus the catamaran lead-in overnight, which was 375. So you can see that even though, um, you know, this is in a completely different lead to the catamaran, really, in terms of size, in terms of facility, in terms of, um, you know, the sort of comfort it affords your customers, the, the 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 sort of next price up it's not an exponential leap up it's not that much more than the initial 375 you can do a six night cruise for 2994 us dollars and you can also do a private version of this for um just under 30000 us dollars um so again if you broke that down um, by 20 people, if you had a group of 20, that would work out per person as 1,497 US dollars. So I, I, you know, I don't really want to focus too much on TripAdvisor because obviously, you know, it's, there's, it's, it's completely subjective. 
but just to give you a bit of context, um, Sri Lanka, and this is just from Marissa, I didn't, I didn't include all destinations, but Sri Lanka is graded number 23 out of 101 boat tours operating out of Marissa. Um, it has 84 reviews on there. Of that 84, 74 people have rated Sri Lanka as excellent and an additional three have rated it as very good. So you have 77 of the 84 uh, giving it a, a rating essentially of very good slash excellent. So um, that was a real whistle stop introduction to Sri Lanka. And like I said, I'm more than um, happy to run an extended session for you if you're interested, to answer questions for you, to discuss things on email separate to this. Um, please, that's absolutely fine. And, and as I said, I will follow up with everyone directly as well. Um, before I do um, introduce um, the guys at Leopard Trails, um, just a few facts to remember around Sri Lanka. So the demographic in terms of the typical customer base is predominantly European on board. A lot of Brits, um, a lot of Scandinavians, a lot of Germans, um, some French. Um, they get some Australians, um, but the Australians tend to um, head more for the surfing. Um, and they get a growing number of sort of Indian young professionals as well. Um, they have a really big um, focus on sustainability. So like I said, they're, they're, you know, their boats are built there. Um, the, the people building them are locals. The people working on the boats are locals. It's a Sri Lankan owned company. So it very much is about creating, um, you know, opportunities within the local um environment um, they're also really ethical um, you know in the sense that they follow the really rigorous um, uh, sea life rules um, so they, they there's no swimming with dolphins for example uh, they don't chase the sea life uh, you know they, they can't slash don't um, 100 percent commit to um, you know you sing whales because they go to where the whales um, are typically are but again they're not going to chase the sea life down they, they're not allowed to get too close they're also super super flexible um, in terms of how they um, work with you so they have these fixed itineraries but they're always happy to cost up um, uh, separate itineraries for you or take suggestions from you. Um, their lead-in product is the one-day whale watching, uh, which, as I said, comes in at 100 US dollars for an adult um, and, and cheaper for kids. Um, but, you know, they, they really, really like to encourage people to, to get on the water for longer. Um, they have eight catamarans, one yacht. Um, you can hire the vessels on a private basis. Um, you can do it on a, or you can just join a group. A group minimum for a vessel to go is three people, basically. So not really a group. Um, and it's also, Sri Lanka as a product, you know, is a great alternative to the more well-established or more well-known sailing destinations for the UK market such as you know the UK uh, the as uh, the Mediterranean for example it's also an all year round product because of the way Sri Lanka move around so that's a really really um quick overview of Sri Lanka I think there was a couple of questions that came through I'll keep the questions until the end um and answer any questions we have then uh so I'm just going to hand over to um the leopard trails guys for them to run the next 15 minutes for you so um Daxitha and Radish are you able to um share your screen and uh um hi hi Matt uh, this hi. is Daxitha here um I just would need you to uh, let Radhi share his screen because he'll be share, starting off the presentation. Sure. Um, I think you'll need to invite him on the panelists again. Yeah, I've just done okay, that. Sure. He's on, yes. And I've just made him a co-host as well. Okay, perfect.
So you guys should have control now. Um, Matt, can you hear me? Hi, yeah, we can hear you. Uh, thank you, Matt. Um, and have you got my visual as well? We can, we can see you, Radish. We can't see your desktop yet. Oh, I'm here as well. We've got two rad Radishes. It's not, in fact, two Radishes. One's Radish, <laughs> one's Max either. <laughs> Let's ignore Perfect. the technicalities for now. <laughs> Perfect. And then the next challenge is um, the um, during the presentation. Which, yes. Uh, Dachit, I believe you have access to that. Yeah, right? I think you can share the screen as well, Radish. Just try it. Okay, hold on one second. And just whilst we're um, sorting that out, I noticed that somebody asked a question around the max number of people um, on a day cruise. Typically, group size is um, no more than 20. Um, I think that's absolute maximum. I think it's more like um, 15 for the uh, actual catamarans max. See through any, I mean, if you want, I can just, I, the PowerPoint is, is in this presentation, so uh, I can just go straight yeah, on. I think, no, I think I'm, I'm almost there, Matt. Just okay. one Apologies, second. everyone. This, we're always challenged by technology in this age. Is, Does is anybody that have any other questions on Sri Lanka just whilst we're waiting? Is that uh, the screen sharing working, Matt? Not yet. Not, Not yet. yet. Not yet. And I've been prompted, this will stop other screen sharing. Do you want to continue? Yes. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. And are you on full screen now with an image of a leopard saying private guided safari? No, I'm still looking at about right now. I think, uh, Matt, if you exit your screen. Um, Okay, we can see okay. your um, desktop now. Yeah. Okay, but perfect. On the desktop. Yeah. Perfect. Are you, and now are you on a full screen with a left yeah. hand? Yeah. Okay, so I'll, I'll fire away then. Brilliant. Um, thank you, Matt, and uh, thank you everybody for tuning in. Um, uh, we want to give you a, as, as brief as possible um, intro into um, the wildlife experience in Sri Lanka and at Leopard Trails. Um, my name is Radish Selamutu and I'm one of the founders at Leopard Trails. And uh, uh, this, was, this company was started uh, nine years ago uh, by a close group of friends uh, who are very passionate about wildlife and conservation, uh, experiential travel. Uh, we're constantly traveling to various parts of the world as well. And uh, we wanted to have our own place in Sri Lanka. It was initially a, a sort of a, a hobby and then it's uh, developed over the years through passion into what it is uh, today. Just want to quickly uh, let you know um, what other businesses were associated with and our affiliations. Um, so uh, we run Culinary Ceylon, which is an experiential restaurant with the degustation menu in Colombo, Sri Lanka, and cooking classes as well. And we're also a tour operator uh, that uh, does uh, safaris to uh, high-end lodges in Southern Africa. But not just that, we also do quite experiential products like um, um, self-drive uh, tours as well. So um, I wanted to sh start off with um, something relevant uh, to the topic that uh, uh, we had put forward, uh, and that's um, the actual wildlife product in Sri Lanka, and 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 what that what that is 
uh, compared to Africa? Because this is a this is a question that we quite often get. How does it? Uh, how does the safari experience compare to Africa? So the short answer is it cannot match Africa's diversity of charismatic mammal species. Um, but but then let's let's delve in deeper and see um, uh, what we have to offer. So so Sri Lanka, being a tropical island, we have um, fantastic. Um, uh, reptile and uh, bird viewing, but we also do have charismatic mammal species. Uh, as you can see here in the picture, we have some spotted deer, samba, um, we have a fishing cat, jungle cat, uh, grey langur monkey. Uh, the, the birding, as I mentioned, is phenomenal from um, uh, peacocks, uh, uh, one of the best places in the world to see green beaters, uh, hawk eagles, crested hawk eagles. Um, serpent eagles, um, black neck stalks on the top left there are tallest bird uh, reaching up to uh, between four and six feet tall, hornbills, painted stalks, king, uh, a huge variety of kingfishers, uh, jungle fowl on the bottom right there are national bird. And then of course these mammal species uh, such as the wild water buffalo, the uh, a wild boar, the mugger crocodile. Yala is actually, Yala National Park where we operate is actually um, uh, one of the best places to see mugger crocodiles in the world. Um, and then on the bottom right there, the land monitor. So the, the top two images there, uh, two of the uh, favorite uh, species that leopard would prey on. So, um, So, so I, I think the point is we can we can offer a very good parallel experience with Africa, and this is for any high end tour operator. This is a common question you you might be asked: um, How does it com compare to Africa? And um, you know, the the answer is is, is if, if if you've been to Africa and you've done safaris there, quite often you develop a passion for the natural world, and you want to uh, tick more boxes. So you might want to. Uh, travel to uh, South America for the jaguar, or you might uh, do Rwanda for the gorillas, or um, leopard and sloth bear in Yala, uh, maybe the the tiger in India. And so, so keep that in mind when you're when you're being asked that. And finally, perhaps the way to market it is that uh, you know, coupled as a, as a two three night stay, which is our common stay at our camps, uh, coupled with um, uh, your beach and your tea country and your cultural experience, um, all that together make it um, a compelling uh, stay, uh, I would think. So then the, the next thing I'd like to cover, which is uh, quite often overlooked, is um, the, the location of our properties and um, the best time to visit. Um, and so let's, so we operate out of uh, two national parks, Yala National Park and Wilpatu National Park, the two largest in the country. Wilpatu National Park is often used as a first stop or a second stop because it's just north of the airport, around two and a half hours north of the airport. And um, Yala is on, Yala is actually on the uh, southeast coast, but a key point to note, which you may not have been updated on uh, through your respective uh, DMCs you work with is that the Southern Highway of Sri Lanka is now uh, completed and operates all the way from Colombo to Yala National Park. So, so for example, when I'm traveling, it, it takes us two and a half hours to reach Yala um, now uh, versus five odd hours earlier. And uh, especially from regions like Gaul or Tangol or anywhere in the Southern coast, um, Gaul, for example, you're, you're talking two hours from Gaul to reach um, um, to reach Yala. If we look at the uh, Leopard Trails Yala camp, uh, a, a very key point to note that's often um, overlooked and not conveyed uh, is the fact that there are two entrances to, to Yala and uh, we are located at the Katagamua entrance, which is near the Katagamua town. And um, uh, about 5% of the traffic entering Yala um, enter from this gate. 
So um, if, if you've heard about over visitation to Yala, this is certainly uh, one thing to keep in mind. Um, and the other thing is that um, Yala has uh, three other blocks that are visited, block three, block five, and block four. And these are uh, accessible within um, a reasonable time period from our camp, uh, whereas uh, um, from the southern entrance, it can take uh, um, you know over an hour and a half to to visit these places. And and these these blocks three, four, and five, uh, you know, you can have days that uh, you would not have a single person entering into the park. So we we love to visit these these areas. Block five. With our leopard ID program, we've identified 18 individuals in uh, roughly 6,000 hectares, which is like uh, the most incredible density I've heard of with all my experience uh, with uh, some of the best leopard viewing areas in, in Africa, for example. Uh, Wilpato National Park, um, uh, fantastic park, and this used to be, for example, during during my dad's time, my, my father got me into this uh, um, passion, and 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 during that time, uh, before the civil war in Sri Lanka, which was on from 1983, this was the park for leopards. Um, there was zero marketing on this, obviously, through the era that the internet developed, and and as a result, uh, um, it it had it, we went through many years a uh, challenge to get uh, two operators to even think about uh, Wilpato National Park, but it's an equally good experience. And finally, after four years, uh, we are seeing the same numbers uh, visit us at Wilpato as in Yala. So uh, something to keep in mind. And, and I, I truly believe that it's, you know, any traveler is, is going to search on the internet somewhat and and listen to what they see there. And what happened with Bilpatu is, is just several years of not having any presence. And, and when you don't have properties there, obviously then there's less marketing, less publicity and so on. So um, um, fantastic option to consider um, and, and probably for a, a quieter, more exclusive experience uh, at Bilpatu. No, just hold on one second. I've got an error on, this, on my presentation. I'm just going to try and reopen this presentation again. Matt, can you see my screen there? Dr. Yeah, Thorpe, can, uh, sorry, I was on mute. Yeah, I can see that. And are you back up with the monkey uh, right in the center? Yeah, we, can, we can see the monkey. Okay, okay, perfect. Okay, so I wanted to then move on to another key aspect. Um, um, you know, many of you may have heard that Yala has its challenges with over visitation, and that is true. Um, but how can we overcome this, and what do we do as a company to to overcome this? And uh, the answer is purely through having professional uh, game rangers, field guides, naturalists, whatever you may call it, uh, to conduct a safari for you. So. Um, if any of you sell leopard trails or plan to sell it, uh, please have a look at our YouTube page. Uh, you should be able to Google it or perhaps uh, Matt can send it across to you where we have um, hundreds of videos of sightings and, and um, these rangers guiding you through the sightings to see the quality of, of the guiding. Um, over the years, uh, I have been very passionate guided experience uh, probably from my travels to Africa and um, the people I've associated with there. 
um, and uh, the bespoke nature of, of what we offer. Uh, on the top right there, you see um, uh, Ranger Krishan uh, taking a guest on a wheelchair on a boat safari. And obviously, it's uh, not easy to get that wheelchair on, on that um, uh, orua, as we call it in Sri Lanka, but it's, a, it's known as a, it's, it's, a, it's a catamaran, of course. And um, that's uh, on the water that uh, surrounds our, our Yala camp. Um, just wanted to highlight a few aspects of this, um, this importance on uh, the guided experience. Uh, we have been associated with several of these brands. Uh, if, you're, if you have no African exposure, you may not be familiar with these brands, but uh, the Field Guides Association of South Africa um, is the body that controls uh, who can guide in South Africa and does the testing and the exams. Uh, Eco Training uh, is a private sector organization, the oldest and largest training school in the world. Um, we've uh, had them come and consult for us and put together their the training courses that we offer. And then, of course, uh, Nondalozi, which is a quite a well-known brand um, with high-end safaris and and we do uh, guide exchanges with them. Um, on the bottom right there is uh, Don Heineke, a good friend and ex-head guide there who, who uh, um, has uh, trained many of our staff um, as we do a, a guide training course every year in May for, for actually for the whole industry. So we want to uplift the standard of guiding for, for the whole of Sri Lanka, not just for, for our people. So we will be, you know, we have no issue with people going out to other properties and, and, and guiding for them. Uh, what we find is quite often people are so inspired by what we did that we get to retain the best and then the others uh, will seek employment elsewhere. Um, this is another good friend, Taylor McCurdy, um, who uh, any of you have been um, seeing the viral videos going on with the live safaris coming out of Africa. She was one of the um, old um, hosts and she's, she spends time as well with us uh, uh, upskilling and training our guides. So yeah, so this is, um, apologize, this is an old presentation. So, so there's, there's um, content on each of our guides. So I'll just perhaps uh, flip through this quite quickly. Um, one, I'd, I'd like to mention one of the things uh, we are working on is uh, with this company Wild Earth that does these live safaris. Uh, he's a friend of mine, Paul Graham Wellington, he's been in the industry for many years and um, we're, we're in discussion to see if we can now do live safaris from Yala and Vilpatu. Obviously, with this in this uh, time of COVID-19, we've all gone to webinars and uh, digital um, uh, interfaces and so on. And so uh, we're just looking into that dynamic and if we can broadcast live safaris. I remember many years back, we had a request from a high-end travel agent that said, um, you know, they, they had very elderly guests that uh, really wanted to experience what we offered, but but couldn't travel and they, they asked us if they, we could do a, a live safari and that the, the, they pay the full price. Um, at, at that time we couldn't do it, but now we're looking into the prospect of if we can do that and um, um, whether we can work with these people. It's at the same time, it's probably worth mentioning that um, during this time we've launched online Airbnb experiences. Uh, we, uh, we, one of, the, one of the projects we're very passionate about is our leopard identification project. Um, so we are the first people in Sri Lanka to actually identify individual leopards. You can do that using uh, spot patterns on the leopards. And so we uh, bring this into the guest experience and we share it with research people. And we have this catalog, uh, as you can see on screen of, of um, uh, various individuals uh, in Yala and Lupatu National Park. Uh, probably worth mentioning at the same time um, that um, 
just a, li a little uh, sidetrack on, um, on sustainability and um, uh, work with the community. Uh, so these are the, this is our fleet of uh, vehicles we run. Uh, obviously we run when we're in full capacity at both camps uh, up to uh, 10 vehicles and we run modified Toyota Land Cruisers and Toyota Hiluxes. The key thing here is that whilst the private sector uh, sometimes uh, was uh, looking at running their own vehicles, um, around uh, eight years ago, I felt that we should uh, have the community people running these um, safaris. And so what I did was, and, and what I continue to do is, I will fund uh, somebody from the community in the area to buy one of these uh, vehicles. And I will be involved 100% in the modifications, everything from um, steel bumpers to winches to snorkels to the seating, um, the spacing for guests, the lighting at the back when you get off or get in or get out, the uh, roof hatches. And, and you need to obviously hold their hand with this sort of um, um, design and styling. And, and then they own the vehicle and then we uh, will rent it off them. And then what we invest to develop it will be deducted from the fees uh, that uh, we pay them. So that's been a, a crucial factor with Leopard Trails and how we've got along so well with the community uh, over all these years. Um, on that note, I may hand over to you, Dakshita, uh, to talk more about uh, the faculty and experiences and so on. Uh, yeah, thank you, Radish. Uh, hi, everybody. I am Dakshita Karnaratna, as uh, not contrary to what Zoom tells you. Uh, just a moment as I switch my screen. So I'm going to stop share here. That's it. I'm going to click yeah. stop share. Yeah. yeah. Done. And thank Hello. you to everyone for bearing with us through our technical trials in three different locations. Just a moment. Uh, can you see my screen now? Yeah. Yeah. You just need to maximize your screen and then you're good to go, I think. I think it should work now. I hope it's working. Yeah, it's, it's not yet maximized, but we can see your screen. Uh, okay. Quite odd. I just maximized my screen. So sorry, just a moment. How about now? Perfect, done. Okay. Uh, so hi everybody, I'm Daksida Karnaratna. I'm the Director of Sales and Marketing of Leopard Trails. Uh, so I'll run you through our camps, our accommodation faculty and experiences. Uh, to kick off things, uh, this is our flagship property in Yala. Um, Leopard Trails Yala is a hybrid uh, between a premier luxury tented lodge or a boutique hotel and a rustic authentic camping experience. So um, what we do, uh, what we have done is we have mixed in both worlds by combining luxury and simplicity where the guests have access to premium facilities uh, in, uh, in relation to their accommodation and faculty, but also surrounded by the wilderness, uh, simplicity and other interesting activities. Leopard Trails Vilpatu is situated on the buffer zone of the Vilpatu National Park, very close to the entrance. Uh, this, as a, this conceptually varies uh, or differs from the product in Yala. Uh, that's because it's very much in sync with the dense jungle terrain of Vilpatu. So we style and conceptualize this camp to be more leaning towards uh, the hardcore, authentic, rustic or simple safari experience, but of course, uh, with comfort. 
So as you can see, uh, this is uh, will part two. Uh, what we've done is we have uh, combined with both of these camps, the best of both worlds so that we create two products that are diverse and could cater to the different dynamics and requirements of each guest, but at the same time bring them a lot of value in terms of an experience. So those who uh, choose for premium luxury, they have options. Those who uh, choose for more authentic, simple camping, they have those options as well. When it comes to accommodation, as a principle, what we uphold is comfort in the wild. Uh, that is where what separates the guests from the natural environment is simply the canvas walls of their tents. Uh, coming into accommodation, um, we have two categories uh, that make up the inventory of across both our camps. So the starting category is the deluxe tents. Uh, we have eight tents in total in Yala. Six of them are deluxe, five in Vilpattu. Three of them are deluxe tents. This, this particular category is what focuses on the more uh, simple or grass-rooted aspect of camping or glamping. All of the tents are air conditioned across Vilpatu and Yala. The, um, the look and feel, the amenities uh, are the same in Yala and Vilpatu when it comes to the deluxe tents. Uh, we can definitely cater this to families as well. The layouts of the deluxe tents or the layouts we have in place in Yala and Vilpatu uh, um, makes it so that the tents are not far apart. So it's really good for families who don't uh, want to have a lot of distance between each other. Uh, these tents um, in particular can accommodate up to a maximum of uh, three adults and a child sharing the bed with the parents. They can be turned into double, twin, uh, triple, single occupancy. Um, they come, the unique attribute uh, for these tents is that they come with an alfresco shower that uh, really adds value and ambience uh, to the whole stay. And of course, with your own private veranda, uh, the tent is total of 300 square feet, uh, bath amenities, uh, dressing tables, uh, bedside tables, charging points are all available here as well. Uh, so if there are any guests who uh, want a traditional camping experience but don't want to go overboard with luxury, then uh, this is the right category, the right uh, pitch for those guests. Moving on, this is uh, the, leopard trails, the leopard trail suites in Yala and there are two of them in Yala, both are identical. This is where we have taken the, the luxury aspect or the luxury element to the next level, these tents can focus on those guests that want that extra level or that extra bit of luxury or can cater to families. Because uh, as of now in Sri Lanka, we have the largest tents and with this size comes the ability to conveniently accommodate four to five packs comfortably together. So, there is also another very important attribute to the Leopard Trail Sweet Stands in um, Yala. That is that they cater to privacy and exclusivity. The entire premises of these stands are enclosed. So it's like your own private camp or your own private enclosure within a larger enclosure. As you can see, you have a large private patio. You can have your uh, private bar opened up, private dining. We have a service entrance there for the uh, serving staff, uh, the housekeeping staff to come in. Uh, we'll have private pools with scenic views installed. Um, the interior decor is of course also on the next level. Uh, the, all the views, uh, the views of this tent is built so that you really uh, connect with nature and absorb the surroundings. In the evening you can have your own private campfire going on with a private bar. Uh, really beautiful experience there. And going forward with, uh, with the emphasis and importance raised by COVID on social distancing, I think the privacy and exclusivity factor uh, uh, catered or inbuilt by this, uh, this category will play a lot of value and will give a lot of value to the guests. Combined, of course, with the option of booking a private guided safari. Um, finally, uh, the next category, sorry, the next category is the Leopard Trail Suites in Vilpattu. And uh, there are two suites in Vilpattu, two Leopard Trail Suites. Uh, this particular category also can focus on families. Um, as, it, as you can see, it's very spacious, so it can accommodate four to five packs together very conveniently. It can focus on guests who want that extra level of luxury. 
Um, in terms of interior decor, it's the same, but of course there are a few minor differences. Uh, the size is also a bit more um, sized in comparison to Yala. This tent is a bit more smaller, but you feel the ambience and the aesthetics are the same. You feel like you're in a hotel in the middle of the wilderness and you have an intense shower cubicle. Uh, all the suites have an intense shower cubicle. Um, and pretty much um, you really get a whole different experience when it comes to camping, uh, when accommodating this tent. You even have your own private veranda uh, with a scenic view, uh, really good for relaxation. Um, the second suite in Vilpatu is what we call the Old Leopard Trail Suite. Now this is how the suites look like uh, prior to 2019 all leopard trail suites look like this. We were the first camp to actually bring in this kind of tents, this kind of experience or uh, new outlook into glamping. Uh, these suites pretty much, uh, these kind of suites also uh, have the same kind of amenities, facilities, uh, intense shower cubicle, but of course they differ from the look, interior deco, uh, but uh, with their size, they can accommodate families as well. Uh, there is a reason why uh, all of the uh, upgrades between these tents did not synchronize or they did not take form with all of uh, for, with each tent. That's because um, as a company and as a principal, we always uh, yearly update, innovate our product and experience. But, and uh, most of the upgrades were planned for May 2019. But sadly, with the Easter crisis, we could not follow through. Uh, however, with uh, bookings trickling in later on in 2019, we took a risk and uh, we used the traditionally busy months of January and February uh, because it was considerably low occupancy and upgraded the Yala camp. Uh, of course, now we are faced with a new crisis, but we hope as things change for the better, uh, we can resume this um, uh, gradual progress in evolution. So the Leopard Trail Suite also uh, has more amenities, of course, more floor space. It can accommodate up to maximum four to five packs. We can offer it on single, double, twin, and triple occupancy. Uh, there are two suites in Yala, two in Vilpatu, and like I showed you, one in Vilpatu is differently different in visual uh, and amenities. One is the old suite tent. Uh, the te uh, suite tents in Vilpatu are 700 square feet while the tents in Yala are 1,000 square feet, including the veranda. Uh, then coming into faculty, both of our camps are equipped with lounges. The lounge in Vilpatu is more open to the natural surrounding, while the lounge in Yala is air conditioned. And this is what you see right now on the screen. Uh, we are the first camp to air, have an air conditioned lounge tent. This, the launch is the first impression of a guest who's checking into our camp. So they are picked up by our guides from the pickup point, bought and then accommodated comfortably in the launch. This is where we serve them a nice uh, welcome drink, a uh, hot or cold towel, depending on the weather. And most importantly, this is where the guide acquaints with the guests. This is the first stage of building our personal connection with the guests. This is where we keep them informed on the Yala Park, on uh, reaffirming their data requirements, restrictions, their interests in terms of sightings, uh, any interest in other activities or experiences they would like to partake, informing them of safety regulations, the do's and don'ts, and pretty much gauge them and understand them. This, um, so traditionally we are an all-inclusive experience where we serve all meals, beverages, snacks, and provide two game drives per day of stay. So this is a sample itinerary where usually the first game drive is in the afternoon after a late afternoon check-in after lunch and followed by um, the campfire dinner in the evening and then the morning half day game drive will be the next day and then you repeat as per your stay. But this is a sample itinerary, and I mentioned it's the traditional experience. That's because at the heart, we are completely bespoke. We are extremely tailor-made. Many of our guests can opt to tailor-make the experience and swap these safaris with other activities or ex and other experiences. We just do not simply uh, conduct wildlife-oriented uh, safaris, but we try to give our guests much more uh, with culture, with history, with cuisine, with astronomy, and give them a whole chunk of Sri Lanka and instill more value in their stay. So for example, we conduct guided bushwalks, 
in Yala. Our Yala campsite is a lakefront property. Uh, we conduct this absolutely gorgeous uh, lake cruise, which is really perfect for uh, bird watching in the morning. Um, and cuisine. Uh, okay, if any of you are visiting leopard trails, if any guests are staying with leopard trails, they have to expect to eat. We revel and celebrate in our food and we celebrate Sri Lankan cuisine. Of course, uh, we adapt to the uh, respective dietary requirements and restrictions of each guest, but we allow guests who are interested in gastronomy to, uh, to partake in uh, uh, demonst cooking demonstrations, learn how to make buffalo curd with the locals, uh, absolutely inter interactive and interesting experiences. The Leopard Trails Junior Rangers. Uh, this is a very interesting and very sought after experience with families, of course, especially kids. Uh, the guides take a lot of pride in teaching these kids. It allows uh, adults to take uh, some time off, have their own space, and the kids get involved in their own way. Uh, they learn a lot. Uh, we quiz them. Uh, and eventually they awarded a certificate from Leopard Trails, certifying them as a Leopard Trails Junior Ranger. We, we automatically um, uh, give this to any family booking we have with uh, little kids. And of course, uh, we are a sought after camp by honeymooners as well. Many of our guests have even proposed in the wild, have uh, customized their setups accordingly. Uh, you can customize your dinner setups, uh, have, uh, have your din private dinners in various scenic locations, uh, maybe facing the lake or in your private suite uh, with your private campfire. So it's a product that can really blend well and cater to honeymooners. Um, and we get a lot of honeymoon requirements as well. Uh, we, like I said, we celebrate our cuisine. So we conduct uh, bush dinners in the evening. Uh, it's a communal experience as guests are huddled around the campfire. So while our guides interact with guests and each of them share their stories of travel and sightings and astronomy, our guides also conduct a bush dinner where we bring a nine course um, tasting menu of uh, Sri Lankan dishes and the guides curate uh, the history and story uh, of, uh, behind each dish. And it's an absolutely informative and very entertaining experience. Of course, um, you'll end up really full as well at the end. Um, but this is what evolved eventually to Culinary Ceylon as well, where we've taken up the theatrical level to the, uh, we have taken the theatrics to the next level and we conduct it in Colombo. Um, so overall, what Leopard Trails allows at the heart is a complete bespoke experience. We're very tailor-made. We customize our property. We customize our team and our experience just to serve the guests. Uh, like you might have seen in the picture previously, there could be guests, uh, differently able guests, guests on wheelchairs. We, we have converted our tents uh, in a way that are able to support them. We have had requirements where uh, uh, guests uh, guests who are on in wheelchairs needed more extra mobility. We've even constructed ramps across the camp as well. These are all done as a personal approach to tailor make uh, this stay for the guests. And with that, we also put a lot of attention into the detail, detail in terms of decor, in terms of service, in experience with the team. Uh, and build a real personal approach. That is why many who patron Leopard Trails uh, and, and of course they check in as guests and they walk out as extended family and they become repeaters. Uh, it's a very personal experience. The, um, considering we have a very niche and boutique approach, all of our guests are VIPs, they get the fullest attention. Uh, so that's pretty much a rundown on uh, what we offer, what Leopard Trails is about. So at the, at the face, we are a safari operator, but behind the scenes, we do much more uh, and we have much more to offer. So with Leopard Trails, uh, pretty much all of your guests get a slice of what it is to be Sri Lankan. Uh, please follow us on our social media as well for more information. Thank you. Thanks very much, Taksitha. Uh, thank you to everyone for joining today. I'm just conscious of our time because um, it's now 12, but can anybody, if you have any questions, um, we've got five minutes now where, where um, uh, Daxitha and Radish can answer any questions around leopard trails, if you have them. Um, I guess one question I have for you guys is, um, 
Out of um, Will Patu and Yala, which would you say is, um, where, would, would you recommend one over the other for a first time visitor to, who has not done safari before or has not been to Sri Lanka before? Or do you think they equally are, um, you know, have strengths in different areas? I, uh, thanks, Matt. I, I think they equally have strengths in different areas. And ideally, and I know this may not happen with the process coming through from booking from the UK and through the DMC and so on. But um, ideally, if, and, and we definitely partake in this if we were asked a, a question through by email uh, through any operator. But uh, ideally, we'd, we'd want to know more about what the client wants to see and what they're interested about. Um, yeah. Depends on time of year, depends on a lot of factors, but um, yeah. game viewing is, is similar in both parks, probably more exclusivity in Wilpatu and probably marginally better leopard sightings, not sloth bear sightings in, in Yala. And, and can, you tell, can you tell us a little bit more about the location of the Yala camp? Yeah, sure. So, so as I mentioned before, the Yala is on the uh, southeast coast of Sri Lanka, and um, uh, with the highway now, it's got very good access. Um, yeah. So, Yala National Park is around thousand square kilometers, and uh, it's mostly Block One that's patronized by. Um, <coughs> excuse you. Excuse you. <laughs> uh, it's mostly Yala Block One that's patronized by, by um, foreign travelers um, and local travelers as well. And we are located closer to the Katagamua entrance, which, as I mentioned, uh, takes in about 5% of the traffic coming in to Yala Block One. The other blocks, which we are located very close to as well and have access to Block Five. Uh, three and four um, also have very, very small visitation numbers. So that we, we push that across extremely strongly with our DMCs. I'm not sure how, how often that gets across uh, to, to um, our partners in the UK. Mm. And we did have a question just come in um, about um, Colomri Ceylon asking whether it's possible to do it uh, in the camps or it's only Colombo. Yeah, yeah, it's a question we get asked often, and we we can consider on a case by case basis depending on the time of year. But it's it's tough to mobilize um, all of that again in in the camps when they're busy and the times might align as well. So, so sure, like especially if it's a big group and it's worth it um, financially, we'll we'll consider. Okay, great. And um, we get a lot of um, a lot of um, questions in the UK market around, um, you know, what what um, clients do around sustainability. Um, what what do you think for, from your point of view? Or um, how do you promote sustainability for you? Yeah. So I think. Honestly, I think our biggest one and the biggest success factor we've had is the one I mentioned, the, the, uh, the fact that uh, we picked people from the community and unlike many other safari operators um, that run their own vehicles, we said, look, we'll equip you, teach you how to um, build these vehicles for anything from, from the seat distancing to the lighting when you get off uh, to um, aesthetics, um, ability to get out of a tricky situation with winches and tires and that sort of thing. Um, and we funded them and we, and, and now some of these guys who are, who are village guys who live, uh, you know, alongside Yala, for example, our biggest supplier has um, almost 20 vehicles. So he's not running a small business. He's running a big business like I often say like, uh, he, you know, he's doing almost as well as we are uh, because uh, he's, and, and, and he then went on to supply um, other big properties because we started this and then, and I'm sure many of the other, 
and the and the um, two operators here are familiar with via uh, or other properties in Yala, uh, other good high-end properties, and um, they started using him simply because of what we did. So that that was a key aspect there. I think with that, of course, separately we hire all our staff, all our a service staff or cleaning, maintenance, anybody that's not guiding or sales or accounts or head office or is, is all um, from the area. And we bring them in and we uh, train them. And um, uh, they're fantastic. I mean, you, you, can, you can do a two week training and, and get them running on the job at 70% uh, um, of what we want them to do and then uh, give it a couple of weeks and they're, they're as good as um, the old guys. Mm -hmm. So on that side, that's what we do in terms of um, in terms of energy, uh, we operate on solar and uh, diesel generators and the, uh, the common uh, uh, electricity board line, which is also mostly hydropower in Sri Lanka, hydropower and coal. Um, I think in due time, for sure, as technologies improve, uh, we uh, should be able to go more into solar and battery technology, the way the world is progressing from as far as I see it. But um, yeah, apart from that, I think um, just general things like the obvious ones like plastics, we've stopped all plastics at camp. Uh, we. Uh, yeah, you know, obviously the smallest things like, uh, I mean, obviously plastic water bottles to plastic packaging, uh, none of that flies at camp and, and everybody from head office down is, is if, if it ever comes in, we watch it and on CCTV and we see it and we'll, we'll be like, guys, why is this in? And you have to have an eye like that. And that's an honest opinion. People, not a lot of people won't tell you that, but uh but yeah uh, apart from that uh sewage we, we we have our sewage trucks coming in and sucking out our sewage um waters uh, from groundwater and um uh, yeah i think uh, I, I perhaps one other point worth mentioning is the uh, is the guide training which is which is not understood often the fact that we are training guides free for the industry and that most people in Yala National Park are, are driven, not guided. And, and, and we're doing a big thing, I think, for the National Park by having these trained professional guides uh, that are conducting these safaris and setting the bar at, at a certain level where, where everybody else aspires to that. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I think I think great. Right. Uh, thank you. And does anybody have any last questions? Uh, if they do, please just drop them into the chat box or the question and answer. Mm -hmm. um, uh, what I will do after the call is I'll follow up with everyone individually just to make sure you have everything you need to answer any of the questions you have to link you up with the guys at Leopard Trails if you want to talk to them directly um, or to talk to you in more detail about Sri Lanka. Uh, but last opportunity to answer any questions. But like I say, what um, myself, Dr. Sitha and Radish will be doing uh, in the next day or so is contacting everybody um, just to make sure you have everything you need um, or you know whatever else you need in terms of um, images, um, rate sheets, further information, what fact sheets, whatever it is. So. I don't think we've got any more questions this morning. So I'd, I'd like to thank everyone for joining us. Um, apologies, we ran over, uh, but we had a lot of content to get through. Um, thank you for bearing with us um, on a technology uh, level when we're trying to connect uh, from three different locations. Um, and have a great day. And um, please check out the... Um, uh, rest of our SLC Connect calls. But thank you very much for joining us this morning to talk about Sri Lanka and Leopard Trials. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Thank you, thank you very much.